Football Boxing fans here with Somi Fury. Can I ask you, because I know that there was, I don't know if you guys mess about when you sort of share the ring sometimes, because there was a video a time ago where you guys were sharing a ring and it wasn't generally sparring, but it was like you were having a bit of fun with each other. But just yeah, yeah. sort of show you different type of his games, uh, because we know that he's not, he's not a simple fighter. He's not a simple heavyweight. Yeah. He's got a lot of things that the heavyweight, divi heavyweight division fighters don't really have. Uh, when yep. you guys share that ring and when when you're sort of sparring, uh, what, what sort of things do you learn from him? Everything, you know. It's because uh, when I'm sparring Tyson, I'm not looking at anything, you know, in particular. I'm just looking at him as a whole. Like that's the best heavyweight in the world in front of me. Mm -hmm. I look at his feet. I look at everything he's doing. I look how he's smashing my face in with a jab or whatever he's doing or punching me in the ribs. I look at it. I take notes, and that's it. You know, I just um, I study because. It's this, it, it, you know, having that there on hand is like the best apprenticeship you can ever get. You know, I can't learn anything wrong. There is nothing that he does wrong, you know, because he, he wouldn't be in the position that he is. Um, so all I do when I'm around him is just soak up, you know, soak up and soak up and soak up, you know, everything. And, you know, I use it in my advantage because what other fighter at my level has got that, that they can say, they can they can call for advice or they can go to and train with any time, you know, it's, it's very useful for me. We know the Furies are a fighting family. Um, how much of an inspiration was Tyson's for you to actually become a boxer, actually go through the amateur sort of, whilst you've got a, a small amount of amateur, amateur experience, how much was he your inspiration and everyone else, the rest of the Furies are about as well? Yeah, definitely. I mean, boxing was something that I always wanted to do. Um, you know, I always wanted to do it from being four and five and six. I've always done boxing you know I've always loved it so there was nobody that ever forced me into doing it um I kind of just got up and started training one day you know I was very very young running five six seven eight miles you know hitting the bag in the garage you know doing my own thing nobody was watching me I just did it by myself and then year after year after year I found a way to get forward in the game you know when I was young I couldn't you know necessarily get to a gym I was that young but when, every year that went by I thought right what can I do to move forward I'd, I'd start going to the gyms wherever I could. You know, I'd get the train, I'd get the bus, I'd get whatever I could to get to a boxing gym. I'd spend every single pound, penny I had on boxing, you know. I, I, and that's just the way it was, you know. In order to be successful, you need to dedicate your full life. And looking back now, you know, obviously, I'm nowhere in the sport. I've had four fights, um, not won or anything. I'm fully aware of that. But looking back on how hard I've worked to get here is, you know, I look back and think, how did I do it? Because some some days, honestly, you wouldn't believe it. You'd have to be there to witness it. You know, there'd be some days where it was literally thunderstorming, hailing, as as bad as you can get, literally like stones falling. Yeah, and it blows zero, freezing. And I'd be at the bus stop, some bus stop in a t-shirt with a carrier bag with me gloves in it and some wraps, and and shorts. You know, it was freezing cold, and I did that month after month after month after month after month. And yeah, it was hard. Imagine doing that after a week of bad training as well. Like two, three, four spars a week, not going right, getting smashed to pieces, and you're still getting up in the morning and going to do it. I did that for months. And this is the thing that many people don't realise, you know, and that's how you know what you have in your fighter. And that's what my dad obviously knows in me now because he's seen me do all these things and he's seen me, seen me be so dedicated. I ain't going to take no for an answer. And that's why a lot of people give me criticism for you know, saying I want to do this, I want to do that, but I believe in my whole heart. And you best believe I'm going to do everything that I've got to achieve them goals. You know what, I spoke to Frank last week and he was, he was, we were talking about sort of the government investment into boxing, which they haven't done. And he was like, people don't understand, only 5% of boxers probably make money yes. just off boxing. And the rest of them can't yeah. survive really, because the rest of them have got to work or do, do whatever they need yeah. to do. So it's, it's, it is important that, you know, these sort of stories where the Furies years ago, Tyson Fury was his upcoming fighter, but even then he wasn't a big name. But it's only now, in the last couple of years that, you know, Tyson's made, especially after that Vladimir Klitschko fight and maybe just a couple of fights before that he made his name. But boxing is a tough sport. Like, it doesn't mean that you're going to be earning money as soon as you step into yeah. the ring. No, no, does it? No. I mean, I can remember being, well, all my life as a teenager, you know, I never could afford nice things. You know, I never could go to the draft centre and buy myself a shirt. I didn't have £2 in my pocket. I couldn't even afford a, a McDonald's at the best of the time. But I knew I didn't want to do anything else. And I knew if I started going out, doing a bit of work and doing other things that it would distract me. So I thought, do you know what? I'd sooner sit it out. 
I'm fine with having no money. I think it was. I was 18 turning 19 and I didn't have one pound. And that's on my mother's life. I didn't have a pound. Um, I had no money. I was broke. Um, I had to ask my mum for, I think it was one pound fifty for the bus at 18 going on 19 because I didn't have any money. I was boxing amateur at the time. That doesn't pay. Um, you don't get paid for training. I had no sponsorship. I had nothing. But I said, you know, I looked at myself in the mirror and I said, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm a man and I haven't got a pound in my pocket. Yeah, it's not a good position, but I know one day it will pay off. And then I turned pro when I was 19. I had my first fight at the MEM. I thought, yeah, just one step, it's, it's paid off. And I've got the, had my first fight, had my second fight, got a bit of money in my pocket. And then a lot of people don't understand. You put the work in, you will see a reward. I put all that work in that I've just mentioned, you know, going years without any money, you know, traveling up and down the country with nothing. But I got it back in another way, you know. My fight, you know, everything, I believe everything's meant to be. You know, it was meant to be for my fights during that year to get cancelled. It was meant to be for my big break to be on Love Island. And that has, has been an extremely big money maker for me. And I'm extremely fortunate. But then again, I'm extremely confident that I know the only reason I got that break is through working so hard at the boxing. And I know that in my own head. If I'd have sat at home and at burgers day after day, I wouldn't have got nowhere. But it was, it, I dug in so much in the boxing that it showed me light in Love Island mm. and now it paid off in the boxing. You know, I do, I, do, I do believe stuff like that. You know, it's hard to... I'll see you later. It's hard to... It's hard to get your head around that, but you can only be there to witness it. You know what I mean? I've come from nothing. I had nothing. You know? And it is what it is. Life's what you make it. You know, you've got to dig in. You've got to want it. And what am I doing? Straight back. I'm straight back in the hard times. You know what I mean? I'm in the gym and getting punched in the face every day. I don't need to do it. You know, I can smile at a camera and post a picture up on the internet and live my life that way. I don't need to get punched to death in the gym or risk my life in the boxing. I don't need to do it. Mm. I do it because I love it. And I've been doing it since I've been four or five years old. And this game is all about sacrifice. And I've sacrificed everything. And I will continue to sacrifice everything to get to where I want to be. How, uh, how much are you liking the amount of travellers that are in boxing at the moment and the amount of travellers that are actually world level you've got people like billy joe saunders uh your yeah. brother tyson fury you've got some good level uh traveling boxers out there um what do you what do you make of that because there's been a growth in the last maybe five five to seven years of travelers coming through what, what mm -hmm. do you make of that you know it's it's good it's very good um you know they're all doing marvelously well i mean i don't think you'll ever meet a traveler who can't fight to be fair um but some of them get, you know, sidelined by work and stuff like that and, you know, going out and partying. But the other percent, like your Billy Joes, like your Tysons, you know, like your Andy Lees and all those type of boys, you know, they stay on and they do well. You know, so if, uh, you know, all the travellers that's about today, they're doing well. You know, I don't know, I don't know one who isn't doing well. So all they've got to do is stick in and keep dedicated and it's shown that they can do it. You know, Billy Joes, one example. Tyson's another example. You know, all these great names and world champions are there to be looked at and to give off motivation like they do for me and everybody else in the country.